All right, we are at the Undead Burke Bonfire, so now it's time to go show this uh, Taurus demon who his daddy is. You know what I'm saying? Give him a colonoscopy with his own hammer. That's right. That little bridge that he's guarding right there, we got places to go and people to see. All right, and he's not going to stand in our way. That's right. We're going to show him who's boss. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Actually, forget that Taurus demon. The secret uber boss of this entire area is Havel, right? And he's lurking down in a uh, deep, dark cellar down there waiting for us. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go kick his ass, too, because he's got a ring that I want. Okay, his ring is actually uh, really nice in here. It, it gives you 50% extra equipment capacity, which essentially means you can run around with a few extra pieces of armor and still fast roll. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. Or, in my case, you can increase your weapon weight and size... Which, as soon as I pick up that claymore, I'll be picking up oh, three or four more pounds there. And then should I uh, decide to put on a heavier piece of gear or whatever. Although, I'll pretty much be downgrading with gear. The next thing I'll be getting is the Crown of Dusk. And that thing only weighs like, I don't know, a third of a pound or a half pound. Something like that. It's uh, almost a whole pound lighter than this hood that I'm wearing right now. Doesn't really offer crap in the way of protection, but boy, it buffs your magic. I think it makes you, uh... Oh, well, don't miss... Let's see. I, I hate to misquote myself, but I believe you're 30% weaker to magic, but your uh, magic is 20% stronger. Which, uh, in DPS terms, is actually a good trade-off, as far as I'm concerned. You know, sure enough, you know, sorcerers are going to give me the blues, I guess. But uh, on the same token, I will be raising my magic dramatically, you know, in the long run, with this build. It'll be uh, pretty much a magic endurance build, I guess you could say. Really uh, works nicely with the Moonlight Greatsword. Um, believe it or not, the Moonlight Greatsword scales with magic. So it's, you know, instead of like a strength or dexterity-based weapon, um, not only is your magic increase the potency of, you know, your magic and your sorceries, which opens up just about all the sorceries to me, should I ever decide to use them, such like, you know, homing soul arrows and, you know, things of that nature. But it also uh, uh, greatly buffs the damage of the Moonlight Greatsword. All right, so I'm going to try to uh, find someone here. I know I'm going to go fight the Taurus Demon, and I would like to have someone with me down there uh, to keep Havel busy. Makes backstabs a little easier. Havel's doable by yourself, but uh, you just got to keep your dodging skills up because um, pretty much one hit, even blocked... I'm th I'm thinking one hit is is gonna one shot me, so uh, it's nice to have someone down there that's uh, and essentially drawing his attention. If he's looking at the other person, I backstab him. If he's looking at me, um, whoever's uh, whoever I summon should backstab him. Hopefully, they do their job. All right, so you can see me inch forward. I'll just be slowly clearing the place out. I don't want to deprive whoever I summon of all the souls in this area. I mean, people who come in to help you. Uh, be nice if they get uh, get paid a little bit for their work. But uh, Havel, Havel brings a few thousand. I think... Uh, uh, you know what? I think it's tw 2,000 for me and then 1,000 for my summons. Something like that. Because I believe when you're summoned into somebody's world, you get half what they get when you kill something. So... That's what you get for throwing all those firebombs at me, asshole. All right. I really need a um, a hollow soldier waist cloth. That is going to be my next uh, uh, leg piece of armor, and it just doesn't want to drop for me. I've been doing pretty good on other drops. Unless I got the Black Knight sword already. I, th I thought that was pretty cool. I'm not going to use it, but uh, I have used that weapon before. That's actually a really cool sword. It's really good for you know if you're going to meet the stats required to swing it, which are pretty high. Um, I believe it's it's it has several stats factored in: strength, dexterity, and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just strength and dexterity, but it, you know it's up there. It's not like sixteen and ten. It's more like you know twenty and twenty or something like that. But uh, once you get your stats up there, you really don't have to buff your stats as long as you get that to plus five. I think it takes Twinkling Titanite to upgrade it. Then it's uh it's really effective for for lower levels. You know, especially new game, even new game plus. It's it's a good. Good weapon. I don't believe you can buff it, though. I don't think it takes, like, you know, a Dark Moon Blade or any of that stuff. I was trying to kick that dude in his face. Uh, you know, they need to be more sporting about this. You know what I'm saying? 
Longsword is actually a really good weapon. Does good poise damage. Um, scales just normally, you know, nothing real special about it. It's just solid. Doesn't suck. It's not great, but it doesn't suck. It's 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 a good weapon. The poise damage uh, is its one redeeming factor. I would say that. Longsword, broadsword, uh, what is it? The uh, sunlight blade, which uh, looks really, really mediocre, but uh, sc scales well with dexterity, I think. But it does really good poise damage too. They don't have a whole lot of range. You know, they're just they're a small standard sword. All right, I'm gonna go back and look one more time. Let me get this uh, this lizard turtle guy up here. I call them turtles. I know they're lizards. And get my twinkling titanite and whatever else it decides to drop for me. But uh, I'll go back and look one more time. See if I can't get a summons. I'll go down here and solo havel if I have to. But uh, much more comforting. Oh, nice! Gave me another chunk. Sweet. And, well, if I'm using the Moonlight Greatsword, well, that's Dragon Scales, you know. But uh, Chunks will come in handy for, uh... Well, they could come in handy for my Claymore, but I'm not going to be doing standard scaling. Once I get it to 5, um, I'm going to go with a Fire upgrade. Seeing as I'm not enhancing my Strength or my Dexterity anymore, it's not... Its damage isn't going to scale uh, very well with uh, standard upgrades, right? What you, what you would call normal upgrades. So... I'll go for, you know, lightning or fire. I can get fire first down there in the, uh, in the, uh, in the graveyard and the, you know, down there on the, by the entrance to the tomb of the giants, there's a blacksmith at the bottom of that whole skeleton area. I'm trying to remember what that place is called, but, uh, you can run it, you can get fire first. I'd have to wait till I get to Anorlando for the lightning. And Anorlando, I mean, uh, the lightning, lightning works well too. I mean, it's it's six of one half dozen of another. I think the uh, fire is the easiest to upgrade. Go mess around in the swamp and farm slugs for a while. You know, kill Quaylag and then go farm slugs. You won't get bothered by invaders or anything once you've defeated the boss in that area. And you can farm those slugs all you want. And I'll need to go around that area to get down the great tree. Okay, so I can uh, get some dragon scales anyway. Down at the bottom of the great tree, there's a hydra that drops, I believe, two scales. And there's... I don't know, three or four more random scales laying around down there. And between that, um, let's see, there's another Hydra down there in the uh, in the forest basin area. And that drops a dragon scale. Anyway, between all the scales, and then once you get to the painted world and mess around with uh, Priscilla, there's a dragon scale or two to be had out there. All right, here's Havel, this big-ass dragon tooth. And his, <laughs> his badass shield. Yeah, one overhand hit like that, and I, I believe it's insta-death. I already don't really have uh, any health as it is, and I have no armor. And Yeah, that did a whole five damage. You had to stop and think about that. There we go. See, yeah, this guy I summoned, he knows what to do. Basically, whoever Havel's not aggroed on needs to be getting in there for backstab. Oh, no. Now, when he follows that up with with a with a uh, with another overhand, sometimes he'll spam them on you. That second one almost always gets me because I'm not expecting it. One good thing about him, he's easy to bait. If you want him to attack, you basically just get in range, and then he's easy enough to avoid 90% of the time. He's not too hard to get behind. About the only time he's he's hard to circle, in other words, fish for a backstab is when he's uh, blocking with his uh, dragon's tooth or 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 with his shield, and he's locked onto you essentially. When he's locked onto you, he's going to spin with you. It's hard to get. Uh... Oh, that was a waste. It's hard to get a backstab like that. Look at that, a whole forty points of damage, and the guy's got like fifteen hundred health or something stupid like that. forgot about that reinforced club that's actually uh, one of the best weapons in the game especially for low level you get that it does bleeding and then you can get uh, you know a fire or a lightning enchantment on it also and you and it takes almost no stats to use it it's actually a friggin amazing weapon 
It's beautiful if you want to keep a lower level, like a uh, cleric monk type guy running, you know, a Wrath of God build, basically, with the reinforced club there. And the reinforced, it, shoot, it's available from this merchant right here in the Undead Burg. I mean, it's <laughs> almost free. I think it only costs like 500 souls. It's, it's amazing, really. Swings quick. Does good poise. I mean, it's, I, I don't think there's any really any downside to it. It's, but it's not a great weapon. You know, if you're looking for a big weapon, then, uh, I've already decided on the Moonlight Greatsword build. Yeah, there's no point in taking any chances now. I'm just going to be real careful. We've got him almost dead. And a good thing is, is the summons gets the credit for this guy. Then we can go kill the Taurus Demon, and he can get credit for uh, for that one, too. It's like a twofer. So that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> Neither of us are doing anything to this dude. Oh, yeah. Wow. Woohoo! Kick-ass love. I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. Oh, man. Some people's gamer tags or PSNs are just awesome. All right, so I got my turtle and got Havel out of the way. Got the knight down there. Got everything I pretty much need in this area. So uh, the only reason I would ever come back is to help people. One good thing about staying a relatively low level is you can come back to any area and you can say, man, I, I struggled here, you know? When I get through all this crap, I'm going to come back here and help somebody. You know, especially once you get good gear that you can actually fight with. Um, it's nice to be able to come back and one or two shot some of these bosses and harder enemies who gave you the blues. You go down there and fight Havel with a fully upgraded, I don't know, say lightning weapon or or something like that. And uh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to destroy Havel. He's tough when you don't have anything upgraded yet, you know. There's technically a blacksmith that you can get access to early, but you're not going to have access to a whole lot of, you know, Titanite and stuff like that. You may get lucky and have a few get dropped by uh, some of these hollow soldiers and things like that if you're really lucky, but still, um, you're just not going to get any just really overpowered gear until you get later in the game. Then you can always come back here. But coming through here the first time, these guys, uh, you know, they put up a fight. Stupid Taurus Demon and Havel and stuff like that. Sure enough, you might be able to two-shot him later, but right now, <laughs> these guys will give you the blues. Look at this dude's hammer. It's three times as big as I am. Okay, now I really need this dude to attack. Okay, he's supposed to be on the other side. You're supposed to you're supposed to bookend Taurus Demon. One behind, one in front, and basically keep him confused. He, he, he won't really know who to aggro most of the time. As long as you split his attention... See, he, if he keeps his attention, I can stun lock him there with a couple two-handed attacks. And okay, yeah, this is this is embarrassing. He should have been attacking that entire time. Honestly, it's not like uh, the Taurus Demon was cut in a cutscene or anything. Whatever, he's almost dead. See, he, a little help, you know, just a little. You're here for for what reason? Um, yeah. Why don't you just stand back and watch? Wow. Well, okay. Yeah, I understand that I can heal my my followers, but uh, on the same token, I have to be able to step back for one second to uh, to heal. So that's fine. All right. Anyway, got past all that. I notice I'm glowing here because my uh, blue tearstone ring kicked in. That door right there, the key to that is on the other side of the gate up there by the uh, the Gargoyle Chapel. So we'll get that later. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow. Far from it. I am Soler of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. Do you find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reactions. I get that look all the time. <laughs> Not just a little bit creepy there, Solaire. Just a little. 
Nice view, man. Oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? It pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds. And engage in jolly cooperation. <laughs> of course, we are not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> or hollow. Oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body like a magnificent father if only I could be so grossly incandescent I see you appreciating that but uh, if, only... if you look out there you still have that that haze of death over everything even with the beautiful Sun breaking through the clouds still have that cloud cover covering the land and it's still I don't know no happy seagulls and bright sunshine and glittering ocean seascapes and all that crap no, this is, uh, it's a little darker. Okay, now I'm glad he didn't spam the fire right there. Sometimes he'll catch you halfway down the bridge, just for no reason. Okay, now this is something I forget to do. Kick down the stupid shortcut. All right, and there's the bonfire that leads to the undead burg. All right, so now we can... Shortcut back and forth here. All right, and there's two ways, two ways up. All right, from under here, you can get to uh, what's essentially a rat cellar. Come in from underneath, but if you want to open up the bonfire next to the Sunbro or Sunlight Covenant, then uh, you have to basically uh, traverse that bridge that the dragon is guarding. It's, he's also guarding my claymore. My claymore is sitting right there under his hot breath, so. I'll have to uh, I'll have to do that, but I, I want to kill these rats because they have a chance on dropping humanities. And humanities, uh, they're not like human effigies that you get every three seconds in uh, Dark Souls 2. Humanities here actually uh, have some some value. They're actually semi rare. All right, now it's just going to be a lot of this. I'm going to get the Drake Sword. I don't need it. I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Uh, just, just, just for the sake of you guys. It's not that anyone who's ever played this game doesn't know where and how to get the Drake Sword, but uh, here we go. And actually, it must be where I'm standing here because those arrows are not connecting. Let me move back a little bit. This is a horrible place to get invaded, especially if you're on your last few arrows and you're just getting your sword if a guy... Uh, you spent all your arrows and worn out your bow and all this and that, and you're about to get the Drake Sword, and then he manages to kill you, then uh, you've basically wasted all that effort. Anyway, some over a hundred arrows later, like I'm, I'm serious, it was like a hundred and almost thirty arrows to do enough damage to register, give me the Drake Sword. Now when we look at the dragon next time, he's going to be missing his tail. Alright, now hopefully these rats don't kill me. These are some of those aggravated rats I've ever seen in my life. And I rolled. I did roll. I did. And apparently <laughs> you can dodge and weave too. Little ninja rats. Damn it! Get off me! Get off me! Okay, toxic is not funny. Okay, toxic is some serious crap in in this one. I mean serious crap. Poisoned? Not so bad. In fact, you can walk around uh, the swamp poisoned for a while and as long as you've got some flasks at hand and you know, you just be careful. You're, you're, you're good. But toxic? 
Toxic will eat your shit up in seconds. Oh, come on, seriously? Come on. All right, it's, it's either him or me. Wow. Yeah, Toxic right there would have killed me. I guarantee it would have taken that sliver of health and probably one heartbeat. That would have been it. All right, anyway, so uh, they did drop humanity, though, so that's cool. They said to get something out of that. I'll trade a flask for humanity any day. And that's uh, essentially where we came from, I think. You can see messages on rooftops down there. It's pretty cool. This whole world is interconnected. That is one of the most amazing things uh, about this game. It's just friggin' amazing. Okay, some of this is stuff that those hollows have dropped. All right. Um, by the way, you can go down to that bonfire that's down there, the uh, Undead Berg bonfire, and uh, hit it, climb that ladder, come up here, have the uh, dragon breathe his hot breath on these hollows, and go back down, reactivate the bonfire, come back up, and you can uh, let this dragon farm for you, essentially, forever. It's unlimited souls. It's uh, only a few hundred at a time, but uh, they're free. Okay, and if you wait right here long enough, he will do that. And, uh, oh, I don't need him spinning. If he spins on you like that and breathes his hot breath in this, he's going to fill this whole room with fire. You're dead. But, uh, he decided not to, and I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful. Oh, what's up there, Stubby? <laughs> See him missing his tail? Yeah, you didn't like that, did you? Okay, you can, you can get him to come back. Sometimes you have to go back to the beginning of, uh, the bridge and work your way back, and he'll, uh, respawn. Or other times, uh, I don't know, I've seen him fly back from several different directions. I don't know exactly what triggers it. Alright, so this is the Sunlight Covenant here, but you have to have the equivalent of 25 faith, I believe. And uh, every Sunlight Medal you get counts as 2 faith. Okay, so, uh, say my faith is, I think, 8, starting as a Pyromancer, so I'm going to need... Oh, whatever it is, uh, 12, 13 Sunlight Medals, which means I need to go help people. You get Sunlight Medals every time you help somebody, whether you're in the Covenant or not, okay? And you can also use those medals to turn in, all right, for uh, rewards like miracles and things like that from, uh, you know, like Sunlight Spear and stuff like that. That's how you earn some of those miracles, all right, guys? And uh, now that we got this, we call this a checkpoint. Now this gate right here to our left leads to uh, the rest of the chapel and eventually the gargoyles. That's where we're headed next. Nice statue here to commemorate our bonfire. All right, and that's it. And we will catch up where we left off on the next one. All right, for some uh, more Dark Souls, start over with the rest of uh, the series. Click that top box. All right, for a complete list of all my videos, uh, click that bottom box. All right, and to subscribe, click that box right there up on top. All right, y'all take it easy. Thanks for watching.